Welcome to St. Martin, and welcome to our Mariner Drone first flight tutorial. Today finds us in the heart of St. Martin in the Simpson Bay Lagoon, home to the rich and the infamous, and the playground for the Billionaire Boys Club. We wanted to do something a little different for today's tutorial, so we thought, well, since it's a flight lesson for a quadcopter, why don't we launch it from the heli deck of a $28 million 200 foot mega yacht? Sounds brilliant, right? Of course, we had to be docked right next to a brand new Wally 180 foot sailboat, which was insanely spectacular. And this is our friend Oz, who's the master on Blue Denim, and his wife Mash is the captain. Pretty cool office, don't you think? So Oz is our newest owner of a Mariner waterproof drone, with the full FPV package. So we're here to give him a few lessons on how to get started and have some fun. So welcome to St. Martin. We're here in Simpson Bay Lagoon and we're on the yacht Blue Denim. And we're here with... Uh, Oz, Oz, Oz Ibeck. Oz Ibeck. And Oz is our newest Mariner owner and he's here to learn how to fly. So we're going to give him his first lesson and we're going to videotape it so that we've got a little bit of a first flight lesson for all you guys out there that are going to be buying them and trying to figure out how to fly them as well. So this should help uh, simplify the procedure for you and uh, we're going to give you as many details as we can and we're going to fly right off the deck here. We're up on the helipad of Blue Denim in the uh, Palapa Yacht Club in Simpson Bay Lagoon. So alright, let's put it down and uh, we'll go through the basics to start up. Okay, so the first thing to remember when you're powering up the new drone is always power up the transmitter first. You want to turn the transmitter on because if you turn the drone on, and there's no transmission, no signal, it may pick up a false signal somewhere, it may go into fail-safe mode, and it may just take off and do its own thing. So always turn on the signal here first, that way when this powers up it knows what it's communicating with. So we're going to put the battery in, inside the Velcro strap there, tuck that wire of the way. We're not going to fly with any camera gear or anything like that this time, we're just taking up the basic assembly, just the Mariner itself on its landing gear, and just get it up hovering, shows how it works a little bit, hovering back and forth, left and right, etc. So now we can go ahead, we can plug in the battery. The two yellow connections there. Okay, so we'll check our LED. And it's flashing one green flash, so that's good. The GPS lock means we're tracking more than six satellites already. If you see it blinking more than just green, if it's blinking green and then red and then red, red or anything like that, it has not locked onto enough satellites yet. So be sure you don't do anything with it until you see that light blinking exclusively green. Then you know you've got a good clean satellite signal. And we're pretty open around here and we're good high elevation so yeah, it's not surprising it locked on very quickly. Next thing with your radio, make sure all of your switches are in the upright position. These ones are not used, but it's still a good idea just to keep everything there. You'll always keep, this is your rotation for the tilt, you always keep that. Uh, you know, we're not using the camera right now, but just keep it up in the top center. And this is the only switch that's going to be pointed back towards you. That's for GPS mode. So when it's up like that, it's in GPS mode, and that's where you want to have it when you're just learning to fly especially. So now the next thing we need to do is calibrate the compass. And to do that, we use the GPS switch. So when we've got it, uh, we know it's locked on satellites. We just take this switch and flip it quickly, seven or eight times, down, up, down, up, down, up, back and forth each time, and landing at the down position, which is the manual mode. And then we should see the light on the bottom will just be steady yellow. When it's steady yellow, now it's in compass calibration mode, and then we can go ahead with the calibration. So we're gonna do that now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I got the yellow. You got yellow? Okay. So now we're just going to pick the Mariner up. And I can do 
a rotation around my body just like this. Watching the light, still yellow, still yellow. Okay, now it's flipped to green, so we flip it forward 90 degrees and continue rotating. Still green, and when the green light goes out, just like so. Okay, so the green light is out, we've got no other flashes, and that's calibrated. Now again, the next most important thing to remember, you just switched it into manual mode, so always remember to switch it back to GPS mode. Now it's GPS locked, it's calibrated, it's ready to go. Now the next most important thing is to remember where you're going to be flying it. You kind of want to keep the nose into the wind if possible, and that way, you know, if you need to push it away, it'll just go upwind. And what we're looking at right now is the front of it. You don't want to take off, like you don't want to be back here and take off with the nose of it pointed towards you because all your controls are going to be reversed. So basically, if we're going to fly it out this way a little bit, we'll turn the nose, the two red stripes indicate the nose of the Mariner. So just turn them away from you so that you're reading the back label, which is the FPV factory and the Mariner's pointed away. When we take off and you start it up, you have to remember with it looking away, all the controls are normal. So this is your main control stick right here, the one on your right thumb. If you push it to the left, the Mariner will tilt and go left. As soon as you take your finger off, it should stop and steady again because it's in GPS mode. If it wasn't in GPS mode and you turned it to the left, it would just keep going and going and going until you physically stop it. So that's why it's good to learn in GPS mode so you mess up or you get confused or anything, you just take your hands off the sticks and it should just stop. Okay, so left is left, right is right, forward is forward and back is back towards you. This stick over here, of course, is going to be your throttle, so raising this one up will give you altitude, make it climb. Turning it left will make it rotate on its axis, so it will turn to the left. Turning it right, obviously, do the opposite, will just turn it back to the right-hand side. We're just gonna take it up and bring it up maybe a foot or two, and then I'll show you, we'll make sure it's hovering good and everything is solid here, and then we'll just do a little bit of back and forth, up and down, and then we'll set it down, and then we'll reload a new battery and give you a try. Okay? All right, so start it up. It's simple. I mean, it's got a protection safety in it so that it won't start if you just give it throttle. You definitely don't want it to ever do that. You have to physically use both sticks down in a certain configuration. I always use them down in the left. That works good for me, and I can remember it that way. So down into the left, it will power up. If you don't give it any throttle, in three seconds, it will shut down automatically. So start it up again. Give it a little bit of throttle. Now we got to watch, we've got some gusts here, so we don't want to pick it up unexpectedly. So I'm going to bring it up a little bit, we're bringing up, the, we're just bringing up the throttle very, very slowly, just listen to the RPM, you don't want it to come up suddenly. Okay, it's leveled out now. See, even the angle of your deck is confusing it a little bit at takeoff, because it's taking off on an angle. So I'll bring it up a little bit. And you can see it fighting the gusts. We've got some good wind here. Yeah, not exactly the best place to learn. Looks great. <laughs> you hear it working? Let's see if I go right, it goes right. Oh, it's very gusty. It's fighting it constantly. Left. Oh yeah, it's fighting really bad. Okay, so left. Wow. <laughs> now we're gonna get into trouble out here. It's definitely going to be too tough to try and teach you anything here. Great view, but we're going to have to do it on the ground. So as you could see, the wind was a little bit too much up on the exposed bow of a mega yacht. So we decided we would uh, have to continue this lesson on the ground. But meantime, I just finished building a brand new BVR system, which BVR stands for Beyond Visual Range, which is an FPV system with all the extra electronics that also give it autonomous flight controls. So it has Bluetooth and ground station and controllable via an iPad with Google Earth. 
So we're not going to try and test the automatic flight controls today. We're just going to take it up as an FPV system with the ground monitor and shoot a little bit of video around the area. And if you look in the middle of your screen there, you can see sophisticated lady at anchor in the lagoon, just this side of the bridge that connects the French and Dutch sides of St. Martin. But anyway, that's enough of this for now. We need to find a place to continue our training tutorial with those. So if you look just over this way, you'll see the Ile de Sol Yacht Club, and that's one of my clients and sponsors we've been doing a lot of work for over there. So we decided that might be a good place to go because they've got a tennis court that's completely enclosed. So we're going to go check that out. All right, so as we saw yesterday out on the yacht with O's, it was just going to be a little bit too windy to try and practice out on the bow of the boat. There was just too much buffeting winds coming over the bow, so decided to come a little bit more, someplace a little bit more practical. So we're here at Il de Sol Yacht Club in the tennis courts. We've got a nice shield around. You can see the wind up in the trees, but down here it's nice and calm. Perfect place to learn. And that's what you always want. You want some place with no obstacles, open air, open area and nothing you're going to run into or fly into or anything like that and you know aside from a few billion dollars worth of yachts just be careful of those that's all all right you ready okay so let's start over from where we left off yesterday okay so we're going to do pre-flight checks let's open it up okay transmitters on we're going to plug in the battery cable Okay, and as again, I said, it's a good idea when the GPS module is inside the Mariner, it's good to try and keep as many electrical connections away from it as possible just due to magnetic interference. And this wire is a prime source of magnetic interference, so even that extra couple inches makes a difference. So just take your Velcro strap, put the wire underneath on the battery, and then put the Velcro around it, tighten down, push the wire back, and secure your Velcro. And then we're good to go. And that just keeps everything a little bit further apart and much more stable in the air. And again, we are in a different location, so we're gonna have to calibrate our compass again. Especially in these areas, and that's gonna be the feature of a next video. You're gonna be using these, these drones around marinas and boats and things like that. There's special considerations in these areas because you look around, we'll show you down the docks and everything. There is huge monster power cables this thick running down underneath the docks that you don't see, you don't know about, but they create a, a huge amount of magnetic interference. So you have to calibrate and try and stay as far away from those areas as possible because they will affect the compass in here and it'll start flying like it's dizzy because it just doesn't know where it is or how to get back to where it's supposed to be just because of the interference. So always important to calibrate every place you go, especially around a marina. Okay, so again, just a last minute check of all your switches. Make sure you're flashing one green. Right. You're in GPS mode, that's up here. Everything else is forward. Normally when your camera's on, you want to make sure your, uh, your angle is set right in the middle so you can change it once you get in the air. Okay. Everything is good. Keep your throttle at full down. And then all we're going to do is just take it down and left on both sticks and power up. And then bring your throttle up a little bit just so it doesn't stall. So once we bring it up, I'm going to bring it up into a hover just a few feet off the ground. Maybe a little more stable in here today. Yeah. Okay, so we've got it in a stable hover. You want to go left, you just push the stick to the left. Let go, it stops. You want to go to the right, push it to the right. Let go, it stops. Push forward, it goes forward, pull back, it goes back. Now bring it over a little bit to the left. So that's just operating the right stick, which is just all your aileron and, and elevator cyclic controls, just right, left, forward, and back. 
If you want to spin the drone, which is something you don't want to do too fast out of the gate, you want to give your time, yourself time to get comfortable just going in these patterns here, flying around, bringing it back to you, and keeping it at a stable altitude, which just involves slight little touches on the throttle control. You don't need much at all. It'll always stay within about a three to five foot range on its own. See, I've got a little bit of up elevator, so it's gonna keep on climbing a little bit right now. Or sorry, a little bit of up throttle. So we bring it back down. But the other side of your throttle control is your rudder. So if you want to turn the drone, hang on, we'll just let it stabilize, just get a little bit of gust here. If you want to stabilize the drone and then just turn it to the left, and you see it turn. But now you got to be careful because if you try and push it away from you forward, it just goes forward that way, left. So you want to turn it, go back to the right. You just got to remember that when you push forward, it's going to go forward in the direction of the red stripes on the front of the, on the nose of the drone. So I push forward there. So that just means if we turn it around towards ourselves and then you think you're going to push it away from yourself and you push forward, it's going to come right back towards you and vice versa. So it takes some practice and when you start doing that, you want to have it a little bit further away to give yourself a little allowance. Everything is subtle corrections. It doesn't need much. Like I say, that's, these movements here are just subtle movements. You can see I never go past even an eighth stick. Okay, like if you want to get really aggressive, go full, then yeah, it's gonna move. It can be as responsive as you want. See what I mean? That's full stick, but you don't ever need to do that. Unless you're really aerobatic flying or just trying to really go fast or something, but. Okay, so we'll bring it back down. And it'll basically just keep coming down on its own. And then when it hits the ground, you just let the throttle all the way down. Okay. So what do you think? You ready? Yeah. Okay, there you go. Let's do it. Yeah, just remember, nice and easy on everything. When it does that, remember, give it a little bit of right stick just to balance it out. It's just because, only if it does it. It's going to do it differently every time depending on where the wind is getting it and which skid is catching on anything. There you go. See, as soon as they release, it gets immediately stable. You see, that's the wind, the gust's hitting it, and it's correcting for that automatically. So try it a little bit of left. Yeah, a little bit right. Bring it down a little bit. You got gusts coming under it, so you just, just little tiny touches on the throttle, that's all you need. There you go. How's it feel? Perfect. Really sensitive. You get a feel for how it responds now? Yeah. Everything is direct relational on the right stick there. So that's why it's good to just keep the red stripes, the nose away from you when you're starting. Get really used to that, do lots of test flights, take it out, fly it around at different heights and distances, and then bring it back and just keep practicing that. Bring it back, land it, do it again. Then you go rudder to the left. Back to the right. Perfect. Now land. And shut down. All right, so let's try it again. That's the other thing to practice, just keeping control of your altitude with the throttle. Because it will, it'll vary up and down a little bit at a time, depending on the wind. And if wind gets under it, it will lift it. Wind gets above it, it will push it down. Wow. <laughs> right, getting brave. <laughs> Amazing.
How'd it feel, all right? Yep. There you go. Congratulations, Oz. You're a drone Thank pilot. You. <laughs> Thank you. Look at that. First time out. Somebody never flown in their life. A little bit of general instruction. Just take your time. Remember, stay safe. Stay in a good location. Watch your wind. Everything around you, gusts, anything like that, are of particular importance when you're trying to learn. But uh, just take your time. Stay safe and enjoy. See you next time. <laughs>